quality of service has been adopted by ITUT as a framework for next generation network. The classical understanding of QoS provisioning is at different levels. Uh, we call them the delivery mechanisms. We would look at those. Then we will see how ITUT defines the framework. Specifically, it is a criteria that we shall shortly see. So the QoS delivery mechanisms uh, in IP based networks are actually provided at different layers. For instance, if you look at the layer 2, the data link layer, uh, these mechanisms actually allow the management of admission control and signaling at different access technologies uh, in terms of the resources which are available at layer 2. For instance, the send and receive buffers which are available at the uh, second layer. Uh, these layer 2 mechanisms are actually limited to the LAN segment or the network segment. So uh, we can think about uh, layer 2 technologies which change end to end. For instance, we have a mobile network, uh, we can have a wireless network, and we can have an Ethernet all connected in, in tandem, in cascade, and an end-to-end -end IP uh, connection is established as a service flow. In that case, we would be expecting that uh, three different kinds of uh, uh, layer 2 QSs shall have to be provided. Now, in order to have um, consistent experience at the above layers, layer 2 QS for all these different uh, uh, technologies have to be managed in such a way that a user gets a seamless experience. Then at the network layer, we have end-to-end uh, -end QS provisioning. Uh, it is known as the IP layer QS provisioning. Well-known architectures from the uh, IETF are the differentiated services architecture, the integrated services architecture, and the legacy multi-protocol label switching. Now, these uh, network layer QS provisioning mechanisms uh, have their own pros and cons. It is beyond the scope, but uh, these um, uh, architectures are worthwhile to be uh, studied and considered. So when ITUT uh, adopted a QS framework, it did it as a standardization activity because there are other organizations at the regional level, even at the global level, which are providing QS to their uh, networks. But for NGN, some kind of universally accept accepted uh, QS framework had to be designed. Now, ITUT is providing the lead but it is also mindful of the protocol evolution which is taking place uh, in the ITF. So whenever some protocol uh, modification or release takes place by the ITF community, so it is incorporated as a, as a mandatory requirement by ITUT. So the QS criteria and parameters are defined by ITUT. In, in a document which is known as the recommendations document G.100. It is a general QS framework, not very specific. So it has certain criteria. There are seven criteria which are to begin with very general, but uh, provide a good holistic view of, in fact, uh, complete view of what QS has to look like. For instance, it defines speed of different service functions, the response which is expected out of each functional element, then the accuracy in terms of uh, if it is an audio call, the speech quality, success a probability of a call, uh, the billing which takes place for that call duration. Uh, in terms of availability, for instance, uh, uh, the coverage of a certain uh, uh, service provider in terms of uh, geographical area and in terms of uh, uh, service providers, then the service availability as such 
is also a QoS concern because uh, a service may be available very effectively in one service provider's jurisdiction, but it is not available in another. So the QoS criteria says it is not a very good service. Then we have reliability. Uh, reliability is basically the trustworthiness of the network in terms of how many calls it drops, how many calls it makes, and uh, uh, the overall um, stringent billing requirements. I mean, if the customers are complaining of overbilling, then it means it's not a very reliable service provider. Then uh, in terms of security, obviously, uh, the privacy is a concern. Fraud prevention of any kind has to be ensured. Then simplicity is basically the ease of doing business. That is, uh, if a network has to undergo a software up upgrade, then it should not cause service disruption and network unavailability. Then if a certain service provider is asked to terminate a service, then it should not cause unnecessary delay and procrastinate. It should actually be a simple procedure through which the network can be engaged and network can be disengaged for a certain service. Then we have the flexibility. Flexibility actually implies the ability of the network to change so that the user does not feel it has not been provided the grade or the quality of service as requested. So whenever there is a change in contract, if there is a clause that is introduced at one point in time, for instance, if a user wants the prepaid service to be converted to a postpaid service, then the network provider has to incorporate this into the user billing automatically. And obviously, the user should be provided the flexibility to pay through any means, for instance, online versus offline. Not only the criteria are being defined, but the service functions are also defined. The service functions should actually provide some kind of variation. If there is no variation, then we can't ensure that quality of service is provided by a certain network. So in terms of service management, for instance, the services or the products or the applications which are offered have to have certain variety. We call it sales. Then the free contract user experience should be provided to make sure that a user has been exposed to the kind of service it is going to get. Then the provisioning of service has to be provided in a variety of ways some kind of modification or alteration has to be incorporated. Then throughout the provisioning of service and the contractual period for which a user is getting a service, continuous technical and customer support has to be ensured. If there is a disruption of service or some kind of inconvenience, it has to be dealt with through proper repair regime. And lastly, when a user wants a service to be terminated, it should be given different opt-out models. Then there is also a flexibility expectation so that quality of service can be provided in, in terms of the information transfer. Information transfer means what all information and what levels of information can be provided in terms of connection. For instance, connection establishment, connection termination, should be logged somewhere. Now this level of logging has to be different so that different kinds of information can be retrieved and business logic can be developed depending upon what connection information is available. Then billing and the overall configuration control of the user should also be flexible so that if a user experiences certain billing format and user is interested in getting billing in another format, it should be provided. And if a user has a certain uh, graphical user interface uh, priority, then it should be allowed to tailor or alter the graphical user interface correspondingly.